Today I'm doing another video in my series on problems with the Big Bang. And this one's on the Big Bang speed of light problem. And that problem comes about because the speed of light limit exists and objects and light cannot travel faster than the speed of light. Period. However, physicists choose to ignore the speed of light limit when it comes to the Big Bang model. Uh, to under, and it's pretty simple to understand how the problem arises and uh, why it is that it's obvious that they're ignoring it. Because if you start with a Big Bang model that starts at a point and expands in 13.8 billion years, the supposed life of, life of the Big Bang universe, it could have expanded to the size of 13.8 billion light years at maximum. But because light has to travel back in order to reach us, we can only see objects that were half that distance away, 6.9 billion light years. So because the objects have to go out and then the light has to go back, and this assumes we're at a center, which is a bad assumption because we shouldn't arbitrarily be positioned in the center of the visible universe. So likely we couldn't see anything even nearly as far as 6.9 billion light years. So the fact that we can see something that we think is beyond 6.9 billion light years based on the Hubble scale tells us that the Big Bang Theory is wrong. Just right there, it's wrong. In order for us to see objects nearly 13 billion light years away as we do, they would have to be, the universe would have to be over 26 billion years old, which totally screws up the Big Bang model. And then we can also look at the local velocities. The local velocities of galaxies relative to each other are mostly less than a thousand kilometers per second. And while that speed increases based on the Hubble scale with distance, uh, if that were the, the normal velocity throughout the universe, we'd only be about 46 million light years in size. So that tells you how much slower our local galaxies are compared to the speed of light limit that supposedly the most distant matter should be traveling. And then we have the problem if, if everything could only travel a thousand kilometers per second, and once again, according to the Hubble constant, stars are traveling much faster than that, that are far away from us, then it would take four trillion years for our galaxy to form at a thousand kilometers per second. And we can look at that problem in terms of voids. There are regions of space within the visible universe where there are very few stars that are called voids. The largest of those voids is nearly a billion light years across. And at a thousand kilometers per second, a void that size would take hundreds of billions of years to form. So we have structures within the universe which at normal local velocities would take many, many times the 13.8 billion lifetime of the universe to form. And I may do a separate video on voids as part of this series. Now, the reason we know that we have a speed of light limit problem is because space exists and space contains a quantum field. All real space that we know contains a quantum field, which is composed of quantum fluctuations. Quantum fluctuations have energy. Quantum fluctuations have wavelength. Quantum fluctuations have frequencies. Wavelengths and frequencies are in meters and cycles per second. So the quantum field has physical dimensions and has clock rates associated with the frequencies. 
The quantum field also has permittivity and permeability, which are the electric and magnetic constant that determine how fast electric fields and magnetic fields propagate. And if you multiply permittivity times permeability, you get 1 over the speed of light squared. So the speed of light is determined by the electrical properties of the quantum field. So given the quantum field exists, the speed of light limit exists. So whenever there's real space, space contains a quantum field, and the quantum field has dimensions, it has clock rates, and it has a speed of light limit. So once all those things are set, objects cannot move faster than the speed of light. Light can't move faster than the speed of light. And so this is a true violation. Physicists that support the Big Bang are lying to you if they say this isn't a violation of the speed of light. It's made up physics. They don't want to apply some of the basic physical principles to the Big Bang Theory because it interferes with their religion. The definition of space comes down to it's a region, a boundless region, that contains all matter. And the material substance it contains is the quantum field, the principal substance. And the quantum field gives it dimensions. Space alone, without the quantum field, does not have dimensions and it does not have clocks. So space alone cannot expand. So the idea that it, you could have expanding space that changes the dimensions without changing dimensions, without exceeding the speed of light is nonsense. And I'll do another video on the nonsensical inflation theory on which that idea is based. The quantum field is self-regulating. The properties of dimensions and time emerge directly from the quantum field based on the statistical distribution of the quantum fluctuations, which doesn't vary. So the dimensions are fixed. The quantum field doesn't expand either. So the idea that you can manipulate the rules of physics by playing games like this is, is totally fabricated nonsense. So according to the speed of light limit and our observations, the universe must be at least 26 billion years old, but it's likely trillions of years old, possibly much older, possibly infinite. And physicists need to realize that and stop playing mental gymnastics that are lies with themselves and others uh, to try to support a Big Bang Theory that can't be real. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you do, like, share, and or subscribe. And if you're interested in my research, I talk about this and other great lies of physics in my book, The 100 Greatest Lies of Physics. And I talk about how the real world must be structured, real universe, based on quantum field interactions in my book, The Zero Point Universe. And then more recently, I did a, a book on particle theory. So if you'd like to support my research, please consider buying one of my books. I also have a Patreon account. So thanks for watching.